Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dave from Scent Memories. In today's review, I'm super excited because we'll be talking about one of my absolute favorite houses, specifically discontinued fragrances from this house. So if you're curious to know more about that, don't go away. All right, everyone, welcome back to my channel. Again, as always, if you haven't already, I would love it if you guys have subscribed to my channel by clicking the subscribe button down below and the bell. That way, when I do upload a new video, you'll be the first to know about it. So, as I mentioned, these will be uh, a review of uh, most of my, if not all of my fragrances from Tom Ford that are discontinued or are going to be discontinued. So if you don't already know, Tom Ford is discontinuing a lot of phenomenal fragrances from the house. I'll be showcasing some of those as well as ones that are already discontinued. And I'll also be discussing where you can get them, if they're still available or, or easier to find. The first one is gonna come from the Private Blind Collection. This is gonna be one that's very divisive, very kind of polarizing, and this one is London. So what do we get with London? I really love London. Uh, my girlfriend doesn't, it is a little bit more animalic. So right away, you get this cumin on the top. This cumin is very pungent, it's poignant. It's paired with the saffron, which is a little bit leathery, a little bit soft, a bit um, sweet and floral. So you have that nice contrast. And then you have this cardamom, which is a little bit savory and silky. It's paired with this black pepper, this kind of peppery accord, which is a little bit spicy, a little bit, obviously a little bit rougher, um, adding a little bit of an aromatic component, but it's really, really nice. And then you have this coffee and jasmine. The coffee, of course, is giving a nice aromatic coffee note, while the jasmine is indolic and floral. It's also paired with this, I think it's like galbanum, which gives it a kind of a leathery feel. And there's, there's oud listed in here, which is not really animalic, but it's slightly animalic. It's giving it more of a rougher edge, uh, a deeper, darker base, mixed with a, uh, a touch of, I think, amber. And there's Aramis here. Aramis here is giving a very piney, sort of balsamic base, which I really, really like. Um, and it's very, very strong. This one lasts all day on me. This can be worn, of course, in fall or winter. I wouldn't wear this that much in summer. Um, it's just too strong. And by the way, all of these, I think, are gonna be more sophisticated, a little bit more upscale, a bit more regal. Um, I wouldn't wear any of these really in casual settings, but where we can wear them, I'll let you know. The next one is coming from a Reserve Collection fragrance. Reserve Collection fragrances are fragrances that are were brought back from the Private Blend Collection into a Reserve line that were released temporarily. And this one is Black Violet. So Black Violet is one that I really love. I wasn't sure how I would like it because of the name, uh, but it's a little bit misleading because although Black or Violet is in the notes, it is darker. And in my opinion, definitely unisex. I love this one. So this was launched originally in 2007. It was relaunched in 2019. It's a cheaper floral. It opens up with these really lovely candied notes, these candied fruit notes, which gives it a very sweet floral aspect in the top. It's definitely a bit saccharine, paired with a bergamot, which is uplifting and vivacious. And the violet here is very powdery. It's a bit airy. It's a little bit also a tiny bit sweet. It's really giving off a nice kind of sort of feminine vibe, but it's also very masculine at the same time. It's playing in both fields here. And there's these woodsy notes that's giving off a kind of a, of course, a woodsy forested feel with the oak moss, which is a bit inky. So you're getting a lovely inky woodsy vibe with this powdery fresh uh, mid and top. This one lasts a decent amount, about four to six hours, not super great in terms of longevity. Definitely, I would wear this in an upscale setting, not super, something casual. I think this can be worn in spring and summer, actually, all year round because of its darker notes, but also uplifting notes. So the next one is coming from their regular line, their signature line, and this one is Noir Anthracite. So Noir Anthracite is not for your faint of heart. This one is super strong, very animalic. Probably the darkest one in my collection from Tom Ford, and it is a bit of a departure. Ooh, I can smell that smell in the air. A bit of a departure from his normal, more mass appealing fragrances. Wow. Well. Ooh, right away you get this big Szechuan pepper note, this very kind of almost heat like, spicy Szechuan pepper, which is, if you've cooked with it before, you know how it smells. It's very, it's very distinctive. 
Ooh. It's very ambrosial, it's very herbal. It's paired with this ginger, which gives it a bit of a fizzy aspect to it, a bit of a bite. And in the mid, you get these spices, like galbanum, I think, um, is also in the mid. Gives it a bit of a kind of, almost like a fougere aspect. It's a bit um, green and bitter, paired with the jasmine, which is indolic. And then you have in the base, as it starts drying down, you have this ebony, which is a bit darker, a bit evocative, a bit smokier. It's also paired with this birch and cedar, as well as sandalwood, which gives it a tiny bit of a creamier vibe, a little bit softer, a little bit more rounded. And then this patchouli, which is a little bit dank and earthy, and amber wood, which is not amber, but it's amber wood, which is dry, dusty, and earthy. So you're getting a much more masculine, um, much darker fragrance with um, Noir Anthracite. This one lasts all day on me, at least 10 hours. It is something I would wear um, with only a minimal amount of sprays because it is so strong and also can be off-putting. So the next one is gonna come from a fragrance that is a cult classic. It is a flanker of this cult classic. This one is one that my girlfriend loves, and this one is Tuscan Leather Intense. So Tuscan Leather Intense, in my opinion, is much more wearable and much more rounded and a little bit more complete than Tuscan leather. Tuscan leather is a little bit too raw, too a little bit too rough, and I don't really love wearing it. Oh, I, lo I love this. I love this one. Mm. Oh yeah. So right here you get the, the you get a Davana. With the Davana here is a little bit sweeter, a little bit bitter, sharp, but also rounded. Mixed with this raspberry, which is a little bit rosy and floral and sweet. It's giving off a really really nice opening, which is a bit sweet and un and floral. And then you get this, this thyme, which is kind of herbaceous, um, definitely a little bit stringent, but also very well married with those upper top notes that's a little bit sweet and floral. And then you get this frankincense. Is it frankincense? The frankincense here is a little bit aromatic and fruity. It's a little bit, it's a little bit musky. Um, it's definitely a great component to add to those mid and uh, bass notes, which we'll get to in a second. So the leather here is very authoritative. It's leather here is big in this fragrance, of course, because it's called Tuscan Leather Intense. It's very dominant. It's paired with a suede note, which is a little bit creamier, a little bit more evocative. It's definitely gives it a nice kind of a creamy aspect to the, to the leather. And then you have these animal notes, which are a bit dirtier, a little bit more uh, astringent, but they're slight, they're not very prominent, and they're giving a really, really nice compliment, um, uh, kind of a compliment component to those darker notes. Oh, I love this one. This one lasts a long time on my skin, about eight hours, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a compliment getter. I love wearing it, it's a great one. The next one is gonna come from the Reserve Collection, and this is Arabian Wood. Now, Arabian Wood is a fragrance that I didn't really like at first. It, had to, it actually had to grow on me a little bit, but once I wore it more and more, I realized why this one is so damn good. I love it. Now, Arabian Wood is a little bit misleading because it's not it's not really like walking in a desert, surrounded by spices and dry air. This is more about the florals and of course the woods, but this is very rose and floral heavy with woods. So the, this is big on rose right away. The rose here is very romantic. It's paired with this lavender in the top, which is aromatic and floral. Um, so it's, it's giving you an, this kind of aromatic profile right away. And then you have this Neroli, which is a little bit bitter, a little like bitter green. And then as it's drying down, you get these woodsy notes, which are giving a very nice earthy kind of uh, sylvan component to it. And then you have this Jasmine, which is a little bit green, a little bit floral, a little bit sweet, mixed with this buttery sandalwood, which is obviously giving a, a, a also a woodsy feel to it. And then paired with the moss, and the Lang Lang, which is a little bit sour and sweet at the same time, you're getting a really nice contrast in the mid. And then in the base, you have this freesia that's paired with the orris, which is giving a touch of this powdery component, but it's not overly powdery, it's not overly sweet. And I'm getting a big dose of amber as it dries down with honey. It gives a little bit sweeter, get a little bit more cozy, a little bit more um, sensual in the base paired with that tonka bean and uh, amber and a little bit of that vanilla. 
maybe it's honey, something sweet in here. But as it gets, as it dries down, it definitely gets into that sweeter base. So that is uh, Arabian wood. Now the next one is one that I just got not very long ago. I kind of avoided getting it because it was uh, a flanker of one that I really loved for a very long time. And uh, by the way, shout out to my boy Jay. Uh, Jason, he hooked me up and said, hey, Lisa, listen, you need to try this one. You have to get your nose on this one because it is absolutely outstanding. It's far different than the original one. It's not oud wood, it's oud wood intense. So oud wood intense is a flanker from the original oud wood. I don't know why they call this one um, oud wood intense. It doesn't smell anything like oud wood. This is far rougher, far darker, much more animalic, but in my opinion, much more masculine. This is far more masculine than oud wood, which I absolutely love. It was one of the first fragrances I got when I started collecting Tom Fords, but oud wood intense, ooh. Wood intense is way more masculine. Wow. Ooh. So you get this this cypress, this piney dark green cypress off the top right away. And this ginger, which is a little bit pungent and spicy. In the mid, you get this syrupy balsamic uh, juniper berry, which is um, a little bit also spicy. And this. Angelica, which is a little bit musty and dusty and kind of uh, gives us almost this dry air component to it. Mm. Now there's a little bit of oud here. It's not very oudy at all, but it has a slight skank to it, a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit. And that's what's giving it a little bit of the more animala component here. And I think also paired with that um, castorium, this one is a little bit more, not a little bit, I would think much more animalic than the original oud wood, much more darker, much more provocative, in my opinion, much more, you have to be confident to pull this one off because it really does scream, hey, I'm here, you know? And by the way, this one lasts all freaking day. I mean, easily, easily 16 to 18 hours. I would wear this one definitely in cold weather, not warm weather, and I would wear it when you're dressed up in a nice suit or something like that's a more, a little more sophisticated. In fact, all of these so far, except for Arabian wood, I would wear in the colder weather. Um, and even wood can be worn, you know, fall or springtime or even maybe summer in a cooler summer evening. So that is oud wood intense. Now the next one is going to be one that if you're an amber lover, if you love fragrances like Ombre Loop from uh, Ron Yager, or if you like uh, like Ombre Perso, uh from uh, Maitre, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> I can never pronounce it. Maitre de Agantier La Pro I'm gonna stop pronouncing it because I always hear up that house. But if you love um, Ombre Perso and those kinds of ambers, you should check out this one. It says Reeve de Ombre. By the way, put down in the comments if you guys can pronounce that house that makes um, Ombre Perso because I can never pronounce them correctly, ever. So Ombre, uh, so Reeve de Ombre is for your amber lovers, but your amber lovers who like a darker amber. So it's really, really, really exquisite. Oh my God. This one is a bright, bright amber in the opening and then it starts drying into this darker, deeper base. So you have these, these very bright, vivacious, citrusy accords that are paired with this mint. Um, this mint is very uh, refreshing and cooling. And this tarragon, which is very piquant and very enlivening, mixed with this lemon that's very mouth-watering and photorealistic. It's a very, very big, bombastic citrus opening. And then it's paired with this bitter orange, which gives it a bit of a tang, a bit of a bite. And it starts getting into this amber in the mid and the base, which is very, very cozy and sensual. It's almost like you're wrapping yourself in this amber blanket. Oh, wow, I love this one. And then you have this kind of resinous component. It might be benzoin, it might be other resins like tolu balsam, which gives it a bit of a balsamic syrupy feel to it. And then you have this, this liquor or this cognac, which is very boozy, which I love paired with that cognac or that amber. It gives it a boozy, kind of ambery, cozy feel in the base that really starts drying down into a really sensual fragrance. I absolutely love this one, it's fantastic. And it can be worn, I think, all year round because of its bright opening, but also its darker, deeper base. This can be worn all year round for sure. So that's Reeve d'Ambre. The next one is coming from a reserve collection. Um, this one is 
Bois Marocain or Bois Moroccan. Now, Bois Moroccan is one that I also picked up this year. It was launched in, I believe, 2007, and it was relaunched in 2019. Um, it's a phenomenal fragrance. Oh, let me just spray this on. Let me see if I have some more real estate space here. So right away you have this, this piney, again, this piney forested cypress. And this kind of vibrant, vivacious bergamot, citrusy opening that's, that's giving this very aromatic, lively feel. You have, you have pink pepper also, also paired with it, giving a bit of a spicy, uh, peppery component. Mm. And then you have cedar, which is giving this kind of a sumptuous, woodsy accord in the mid, which so it starts getting a little bit more woodsy. And there's vetiver here. The vetiver is very clean, very ethereal, very, um, very green. It's not your dark, dank, earthy vetiver. It's very clean and ethereal. And then it's married with this black pepper accord. And the black pepper accord is very distinctive and it's giving a bit of a heat, a bit of a, a bite. And then there's this incense, it's set strong into the base with this incense um, sword, not, not like a church incense, but a bit of a, like, like the ch incense you smell walking by when you smell it on the street, if someone's burning incense or in the house, as well as this kind of earthy, sweet patchouli. Oh God, I freaking love that one. So that is Bois Moroccan, a Bois Moroccan. Now the next one is coming from a flanker. And actually, no, you know what? Let's start with one that I, yeah, let's start with this one. So the next one is going to be one that I just picked up this year as well. It is definitely the more animalic of the two. And this one is Tobacco Oud. So Tobacco Oud is freaking phenomenal. It's a very, very strong fragrance. It is extremely long lasting. And it is for your tobacco lovers. It's not really Oud driven. So what you get here really is this big whiskey accord. This almost like caramelic um, hay like whiskey. And it's paired with this really, really sweet, uh, this really sweet tobacco, but also like almost like this dry leaf tobacco. So it's pipe tobacco mixed with sweet tobacco, or actually pipe tobacco mixed with dry leaf tobacco at the same time. It's very interesting. Uh, oh, wow. And then you have these spicy notes, these aromatic, vivacious, spicy notes that's paired with that caramel-ish like whiskey accord and that sweet dry tobacco. It's very warm, it's very pungent. And then you get into this base of this agarwood that's not very animalic at all. It's a bit creamy, it's a bit buttery. Um, it's not an animalic fragrance, but it starts getting into a bit animalic territory. It's definitely rougher. The patchouli here is a bit arboraceous. It's definitely a little bit sweeter. The incense here is smoky in the base as it starts drying down. And then the benzoin becomes a little bit vanillic, very um, resinous. And it's paired with that vanilla accord. So I love when benzoin is paired with vanilla because it plays off each other so well. And it's also married with a cedar, which is a little bit um, sweet and woodsy. So you're getting these sweet woods in the base mixed with a little bit of an incense and a touch of this animal component. But it's all very, really, really well blended. I love the tobacco in here. It's super well blended. It's really, it's kind of dry. It's a little bit earthy, but it's phenomenal. This one lasts all day long, all day long. Now the next one is gonna be a flanker to the original. And this one is Tobacco Oud Intense. Now Tobacco Oud Intense, just like Tuscan Leather Intense, I think um, is a little bit of a, of a misnomer because this one actually is less intense. It's more rounded, it's more chocolatier, it's more sweet, it's also more complete and complex. I think the original is actually a lot rougher. I really do. Let's get a, let's get one more spray here. I can I tell you guys I hate using this juice for this video because these are so precious to me. They're like liquid gold, and to use them, I mean, I have to to smell them, but I just hate using them because they're, they're going to be harder to find. Now, by the way, you can find um, most of these that we talked about so far, with the exception of. Um, actually, most of these so far that we talked about, you can probably find in discounters or the Facebook groups like FragranceBuy.ca or FragranceX 
or the, some of the Tom Ford Facebook groups, for example, you can probably find all of these so far. Um, at least, to my knowledge, you can still pick them up. As we get into the list more and more, it'll be harder to find these fragrances. So tusk, or tobacco oud is, again, big on the tobacco, the sweet tobacco. So right away you get this very smooth, refined, elegant tobacco. It's not a rough tobacco, it's very sweet and, and, and very refined. Now the patchouli here is sweet, it's a bit tangy, it's a bit, um, a little bit vanillic almost, it's not very earthy. And the labdanum here in the mid is starting to provide a little bit of an ambery leathery accord that I love paired with that tobacco. It's really, really nicely paired together. And the coriander is very savory. It's a little bit, it's a little bit spicy. Uh, and it's, I think, really appropriate because otherwise it gets a little bit too sweet in the mid. And then you have this vanilla tonka bean. So as it starts drying down, we get a little bit more of this, a little bit of this darker oriental base. There's castorium listed in the notes here. I don't really get much castorium. If it is here, it's probably just providing a very, um, more of a depth than it is an animal component. And the oud here is very, very slight. I don't really get an oud at all. If, if the oud is here, is again, just providing depth and a, a component of a heaviness or, or a density. And then there's this creamy, buttery sandalwood. Tusk, uh, tobacco oud and tobacco oud intense last 15, 16, 18 hours, and it literally lasts all day on my skin. And I would wear these definitely dressed up in cold weather for sure. So the next one is gonna be a reserve collection fragrance. It is coming back from the original, which was launched in 2007 or eight, I think. This one was a reserve collection relaunched in 2019. This one is Amber Absolute. Now, Amber Absolute, if you love Amber, which I love Amber, if you're an Amber lover, like like I mentioned on uh, Rania J, or any other, um, you know, Ron, Ron and Jay's uh, Ombre Loop or Grand Soir from MFK, if you love those kinds of ambers, this is gonna be right up your alley. This is a little bit darker. This is a little bit, a little bit more um, incense -y, but it is my favorite amber of all time. Now, what do we get with this one? So, Amber Absolute right away get this, this incense. The incense here is a little bit sharper, um, but it is really, really prominent in the opening. So the incense paired with that alabanum is giving a little bit of a darker leathery feel, but it's paired with this leather or this amber, which is very, very sensual, very cozy, very warming. I freaking love the amber used here. It's slightly powdery, a little bit prevailing. It's very rich. Um, it's a little bit vanillic. And then in the mid, you get this labdanum, which is also a little bit smoky, a little bit earthy. Um, it's, it's definitely starts getting a little bit more of the leathery, ambery feel. It also starts becoming, again, like a smoky amber. And then when you start getting into the base, you get these woods and this vanilla that starts adding this woodsy, darker element, these, these vanillic, sweeter components, but you still very much get that amber, you still very much get that incense, and then it starts becoming this woodsy, ambery, um, really lovely, sort of dry fragrance. Oh, I freaking love it. And it lasts, I mean, it lasts, I don't know. I actually smell it the next day after I shower. I can still smell it. It's that strong. And I would definitely wear this one with a very nice uh, suit or attire. I wouldn't wear this one casual. Most of these, again, are very sophisticated fragrances. They're very regal. So I would wear these in an upscale setting. And Amber Absolute, definitely don't wear in the high heat. It's a cold weather fragrance for sure. So the next one is a Patchouli Lover's Dream. I just revealed it. And it is Patchouli Absolute. Now, Patchouli Absolute, if you love patchouli like uh, Javoy's Psychedelic, for example, which is one of my favorite patchoulis, this one is going to fit the bill 100%. This is my favorite patchouli of all time now. I used to think that uh, Psychedelic was the best patchouli. Nope, this is the best patchouli of all time. I freaking love this one so, so, so much. It's interesting because it has sort of a head shop 70s patchouli, but it also a very chocolatey, very sexy, rounded patchouli. It's mixed together really, really well. So right away you get this camphorous bay leaf, this camphorous sort of herbaceous bay leaf mixed with this rosemary, which is also very savory and earthy and sort of um, spicy. And then the Cipriol or Nagamartha, which is very, um, 
a little bit stringent, a little bit, uh, a little bit bitter. Definitely aromatic, very earthy. So a very earthy, camphorous opening. The patchouli here is very dark, damp, earthy. It's not sweet. It's not really chocolatey. It's mixed with this moss, which is a little bit inky in the bait, in the mid rather. And the Gayak wood, which is giving kind of a hay-like leathery feel. I freaking love it. And it's married with this kind of lingerous, smoky cashmere or cashmere wood that's providing, again, a woodsy, leathery, smoky component. And the tonka bean mixed with the musk and the leather gives it a vanilla, leathery, smoky, deep oriental vibe and mixed with that dark, damp, earthy patchouli. It's outstanding. It lasts all day on my skin and I couldn't be happier with this one. It's absolutely incredible. The next one is a plum lover's dream. If you love plum, you probably know what this one is. This is unfortunately discontinued. Why oh why did Tom Ford or Estee Lauder ever discontinue it? It's plum Japanese. The reason I said Estee Lauder, by the way, guys, because Estee Lauder is a parent company to Tom Ford and they probably made the decision to discontinue this one. And in my opinion, this is easily the best Tom, top 10, if not top 10, five Tom Fords. This is one fragrance that if I had to pick five Tom Fords along with Tobacco Oud Intense and a few others, Plum Japanese 100% makes that list. Oh God. <laughs> oh. So you have this very comforting, warming, tantalizing cinnamon in the top, mixed with this saffron, which is a little bit savory, a little bit sweet, a bit floral. Really, really lovely opening, very, very savory and sweet. Somewhat bitter, somewhat leathery. Mm. And then this plum here, the plum is just super, it's delicious, it's almost gourmandish. It's very mouth-watering, and it's paired with this plum um, blossom, which I, you know, I, I don't smell a lot of fragrances with plum blossom in it, but it is outstanding. It's a little bit fruity, a little bit floral with that plum blossom, mixed with the Immortelle, which is a little bit drier, but also sweet. It's a bit hay-like. It smells a little bit like hay, the Immortelle. And then you have this Camellia, which the Camellia here is giving kind of a voluptuous, airy quality in the mid. It's giving a very sort of like almost like this this airy, um, aerated feel in the mid. And then you have this liquor, which is creating this boozy element. And the booze, the boozy element mixed with a plum, that sweet plum, oh, it's freaking, it's, it's to die for. So the amber in the base here is very warm and vanilla and powdery. I don't really get a lot of oud here. I get a touch of this kind of creamy aspect of the, from the oud. It's not really animalic at all. And this oriental vanilla feel from the benzoin. Oh God. There's also a, a note of fur, which gives it a bit of a demulsion feel. I think it's absolutely outstanding. So the third to last one is one that I just picked up this year. Only oh, this actually a few, few weeks ago. I've been trying to find this one forever. It's one that I absolutely freaking love became one of my top five fragrances in my Tom Ford collection, and it's really hard to find now. This one is Japan Noir. Now Japan Noir, I'm like, I just, <laughs> just want, I'm gonna spray it like one time because I don't want to use any of this juice. Japan Noir is one of my favorite fragrances on my collection. It became like I, an instant, instant love for me. So right away you get this very shimmering radiant bergamot with this kind of plush jasmine, very indolic. And the vetiver here, the vetiver is very exquisite, very clean, very green. It's becoming a almost like a fougere kind of a mid as it starts drying down. And the patchouli is very edgy, a little bit, um, it's slightly earthy, it's very sweet, a bit dark. And then as it starts getting into the base here, then you have this kind of cozy, warm amber. It's very nectarous, it's very soft. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, it's a little bit powdery, mixed with this leather that's very provocative, almost raw, but it still has almost this oriental fougere aspect to it. It's outstanding, and this one actually lasted, I mean, almost as long as Amber Absolute. It lasted a really long time. So that is Japan Noir. 
Now the second to last one is a fragrance that I've been looking for for a long, long time. Shout out to my boy Jason because he sent me a small sample of this one, which was extremely generous as it's very hard to find. Once I smelled this, I was like, what the hell have I been waiting for? Why have I been waiting for this one so long? I finally got a bottle of this one and it's my top two fragrance fragrances in my collection. This is Moss Breches. Now Moss Breches is a, a sheep rub, but it definitely has a very fougere, classical 80s fougere aspect to it because this one is so hard to find. Um, if you guys can find a bottle of this one, if you can find a legit bottle, definitely do because it is one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled, period. I wish Tom Ford would bring back these fragrances, I really do. Oh God, oh my God. I don't spray it on very often because it's, it's, so, it's so precious to me. So the sage here is very green, it's very, um, it's savory, it's very, um, it's very prominent and it's, dom it's dominant here. The rose here, the, ro uh, the rosemary is very minty, it's a little bit camphorous, it's giving an aromatic quality. Mixed with this tarragon, which is a little bit anisic, um, definitely sharp and a little bit astringent, but giving a very, very lovely aroma, this kind of bouquet of these aromatic scents. It's a little bit lemony. Now the beeswax here, the beeswax is very dominant. It's a very dominant note. It's This is a very honeyed, caramelic beeswax, which is paired with this, um, this inky oak moss, this forested, damp, kind of earthy oak moss, which is playing and giving this really, really awesome contrast. Almost like this golden amber kind of a, kind of a feel. It's definitely juxtaposed with that amber and that oak moss and that, and that beeswax. And then you have this base of this robust cedar and this kind of dark green patchouli. It's absolutely outstanding. Another one, if you do wear it, wear it very um, sparingly because it is extremely strong and I would wear this in a very sophisticated setting. So the last one is my favorite fragrance of all time, by far my favorite fragrance. This one is a reserve collection version of it and it is Italian Cypress. Now this one I have a few backup bottles of because I love it so much. And it is one that I only wear on occasion. It's my girlfriend's favorite fragrance as well. And for a good reason, it is absolutely outstanding. Oh my God. So you have this very vivacious mint, very cooling, very refreshing, mixed with these, these citrus accords, which are also very lively and very, um, just brings you kind of to life. It actually kind of awakens you. So this basil is very poignant, very tangy, mixed with this very piney sort of um, tangy uh, forested cypress, which is big here. It's a big dominant note here. It's a bit peppery. This basil is very poignant, very tangy, very demulcent. Mixed with this dry, earthy component in the base, which is, for me, it's very dry, very piney, very earthy. And this woods in the base give it a very aromatic, woodsy, deep component in the base, very, very grounded component in the base here. So you have this very peppery, earthy, piney, um, aromatic, savory fragrance, which is very, very uh, similar to a 80s fougere, but giving it an oriental feel. It's my favorite fragrance of all time. I absolutely freaking love it so much. Mm. So that is my review, guys, of my discontinued Tom Ford fragrances. I would really love to know which ones of these that you own, which ones of these have you been wanting to try, and if you do own them, do you love it or do you hate it? What do you think of this? Do you, do you, do you wanna see more of these discontinued fragrance reviews from any other house? I would be happy to do so. Leave a comment down below, guys, and let's just let's talk about this. As always, everyone, I really appreciate you guys sticking around and supporting my channel. It means the world to me. Thank you all so much. Stay safe and take care of each other. Bye, guys.